Welcome to Perimenopause Health. This video is on HRT or hormone replacement therapy, as we call it. Now, why is it that you might need this? Well, if you're having very, very bad symptoms with your menopause, usually they are caused by low estrogen in the last parts of perimenopause. And the sort of side effects that you'll be wanting to relieve will be hot flashes, night sweats, and hormonal insomnia. Now, some women look to HRT to resolve other problems, such as mood problems. They might feel depressed or very anxious during perimenopause. They might have weight gain or low libido. But unfortunately, these problems are not always resolved by HRT, particularly with the emotional problems. It might be the case that an antidepressant is a far better treatment for you. And in fact, I do believe that you should try that first because HRT simply doesn't always work. It does seem logical that mood problems that are caused by low hormones should be solved by taking a hormone replacement therapy. But unfortunately, it, we don't really understand why, but it simply isn't the case. It just doesn't work for a lot of women and in fact women that take HRT in order to try and resolve mood problems most often find that they end up taking another medicine as well so if mood problems are your major difficult symptom I would advise you to take an antidepressant first then if you develop hot flashes or hormonal insomnia or anything like that then you can take HRT as well. <clears throat> now, unfortunately, HRT very rarely helps with libido. And the next slide is going to help us understand why. Women have three main sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Now, let's get testosterone out of the way. Testosterone is the hormone that's thought to be responsible for female sex drive. But there's no definitive research that says that it is. And in fact, women who take testosterone replacement therapy with the aim of in improving their libido, only 50% of them find that it works. Now, when we experience menopause, our ovaries cease making sex hormones. They don't make estrogen, they don't make progesterone, but they do continue making testosterone, so it's not all bad news. What we're aiming for with hormone replacement therapy, and I'm not going to talk about testosterone in this video, that's a whole different ball game. but the estrogen and progesterone is aiming to replace the hormones that we made when we were younger before our ovaries stopped producing them. So, the low estrogen, when your ovaries stop making it, is the one that causes you the most problems. That is what is causing you the hot flashes and the night sweats and hormonal insomnia. When that gets very low, you get all these problems until you start to get used to the level being very low. Now, for some women, eventually they're fine with it, but it can take a long time. Um, some women continue to have problems into later life. And so HRT is very useful for those women. For those of you who still have a uterus or womb, then you are going to have to take progesterone because progesterone has been shown to prevent cancer of the uterus. Cancer of the uterus is one of the most common of the female cancers. And so it's absolutely essential that you do take this. Now, unfortunately, some women, and if you think back to your younger years, if you took birth control or you had a Mirena or any of those other products that contain progesterone and you were fine with it, then you'll probably find that HRT is perfect for you. If, on the other hand, you've taken progesterone, for example, for heavy bleeding, and you may have taken something like Provera and it caused you to be irritable or weepy, Unfortunately, that is quite a common side effect of progesterone because it's the hormone of PMS and pregnancy. Now, we only make progesterone for a few days in each menstrual cycle. So it's not something that 
we actually make every single day when our ovaries are working. You only make it after you ovulate and until a couple of days before your period starts. The only reason that we're taking it as part of HRT is to protect our uterus from developing cancer. That's it. There, it does nothing really to alleviate any symptoms, although it's quite fashionable now for people to say misleadingly that it does because women are far less frightened of taking progesterone than they are estrogen because they've heard estrogen is um, something that causes cancer. We'll get onto that at the end, so stick around. Okay, let's go on to uh, some of the different types of HRT. Many women will have taken it in a tablet form. That's fine, but your liver does have to process it. As some women find that by the time their liver has processed it, it doesn't really seem to work very well. So if you're on the tablet form and you still find that you're getting symptoms, like uh, your hot flashes are not entirely relieved or you're still sleeping badly, then you might want to try a skin patch or some gel or a different format because um, everything that goes through your stomach goes straight to your liver afterwards. And unfortunately, if your liver doesn't process the hormones very well, then you won't be getting enough estrogen to relieve your symptoms. The other thing is that tablets, for some reason, give more of a risk of blood clots and DVTs than any of the other therapies. So if you are at any risk at all, of this then you should consider a different kind of therapy so the next type of hrt we can talk about is a skin patch they might be changed every three days they might be changed less often than that depending on the brand that you have we just look at a picture here this one on the right is what most of them look like I have no idea at all why some of these other pictures show something that looks like a sticking plaster or a band-aid. Most of them look like this. They look entirely see-through. Perhaps it's for the sake of a photograph because you really can't see this very well in a photograph, actually. But they are done like that so that, um, you know, for your, it's less embarrassing. People might not see it the first time they look although after a couple of days, they do tend to get a bit of um, fluff from your clothes sticking around the edges of them. So really, they're still quite visible. And if you want to wear them on the underside of your arm, that often means people can't see them quite so easily. There is a problem with patches that sometimes they peel off or they don't stick for the whole three days, in which case it's perfectly acceptable to buy some kind of medical tape that you can stick over it. I really don't find the micropore one sticks very well. There are some different sorts. If you ask me in the group the different kinds of tapes that you can buy, mainly I order them from Amazon. I can't find them in local pharmacies, but they're a very good option for sticking over your patch if you find it peels off quite easily. The patches tend to work very well. Often you get the ones that S estrogen only. Nowadays, they have a more modern type where you can get them that are combined. So you get estrogen and progesterone in one patch. If you take the estrogen only ones, then you might take the progesterone as a pill and you might take it just a few days a month. There are all sorts of different regimens for taking HRT and that's something really you're going to have to discuss with your doctor and not me. I'll give you a very brief summary of the different types in a minute. Another newer type of treatment modality is estrogen gel. And obviously that's like a, a cream or gel that you can rub onto your skin. And this is really good if you're in early perimenopause and maybe you just have symptoms around your period time or ovulation time. So you can just rub a little of the gel onto your skin then. You don't have to take it every single day of the month. And in fact, it's good if you don't take it every day of the month because then you're not, not really getting too much estrogen. 
one of the common problems with HRT is getting too much estrogen and the estrogen that you're getting through the HRT combined with the estrogen that your body is still making can produce a rather thick womb lining. And so um, you need to make sure that the level of estrogen is just right for you and you don't overdo it. Unfortunately, one of the risks with this estrogen gel is not sticking to what the doctor has told you in terms of how much to use. And so, for example, you might think, oh, I feel a bit down in the mouth today. I'll slather on some more of my estrogen cream. That's really not a good idea. It's powerful stuff. You need to use it exactly as prescribed. If doctor has said you're only to use it whilst you're on your period, then that is when you must use it and you mustn't use more than you are prescribed per day. Hopefully, if you've got a decent doctor, your doctor will say, when the time comes, we'll move you on to a stronger treatment modality. You can switch to a patch or whatever. But it's useful, I think, in the early days. Obviously, when it gets to a bit later on and you need a higher dose of estrogen, you'll probably be slathering it on uh, quite a large quantity and that could be a bit of a nuisance. So... Implants are not very common these days. In America, they call them pellets. Um, I'll probably do a different video all about pellets. My advice for the time being is just to completely avoid them. Generally, you will get far too much hormone out of them, far too big a dose. And once they're in, they're in. The doctor very rarely will take them out for you. So they're a real nuisance. If you develop heavy bleeding when you've got an estrogen one in, it's because too much of the hormone is coming out at once and there's very little you can do to control the dose. So they're a real pain in the bum, actually. I wouldn't recommend those at all. Really quite dangerous. There are all sorts of other products such as rings. You can take the progesterone as a, a coil, an IUD called Mirena. I'm sure many of you have heard about that. Now, if you have not finished your periods yet, then the doctor's probably going to expect you to do what's called cyclical HRT, which actually reproduces a normal menstrual cycle, including a period. It's not really a period because it's not caused by the whole usual rhythm that your body had when you were younger. It's a bit like taking a birth control pill. And in fact, what you might find some doctors offer you is actually a real birth control pill like low, low estrid that actually has some amount of estrogen in. It's not usually bioidentical estrogen. It's usually something called ethanol estradiol, which is a synthetic estrogen, but it works just the same to alleviate your symptoms. So you might get offered something like low, low estrin instead of um, a cyclical HRT until the doctor feels that you are closer to menopause and then you can switch to HRT. So you might take the cyclical HRT where you take estrogen every day and you take a progestogen for the last 14 days and then when you stop it you have a bleed. If you are skipping periods more regularly then you might take a three monthly HRT. So you take the estrogen every day and then take progesterone for about 14 days and then have a period every three months. So if you know that you are completely menopausal, then you can take what's called a continuous combined HRT. And as this article states, you would take the estrogen and progestogen every day with no break and no periods. Most doctors will expect you to be entirely postmenopausal if you are taking uh, this kind of regimen. Just in case your uterus lining, your uterine lining was to get a bit too thick, because a thick uterine lining is a risk for cancer. So generally doctors don't like that to develop. And if your 
uterine lining is a bit thick, generally they will prescribe you a progesterone to make sure it thickens it up and um, tones the lining of the uterus. It's very difficult to explain how progesterone works, but it's kind of a tonic for the lining of the womb and it makes sure it keeps it in very good order. That's really the whole job of progesterone within the body. It, that's, that's you know, they say you've only got one job. Well, that's it, that's progesterone only has one job and that's to make sure that the lining of the womb is healthy. So, right, we need to get on to the subject of the safety of hormone replacement therapy and the safety of birth control pills, combined birth control pills used in older women is uh, similar, okay? So there is a slightly increased risk of cancer. Breast cancer is what we're usually talking about. But the studies actually show, let's get down to the actual meat of the figures now, that when they looked at a group of 10,000 women who had not taken HRT, that had not taken it, let's be totally clear about that, that in that group of 10,000 women, there were around 30 cases of breast cancer. For women who were taking HRT, there was an increase of eight cases of breast cancer per 10,000 women. So that meant there were 38 cases of breast cancer. So it's estimated that the increase in risk is similar to drinking one glass of wine a night. So once you've read this, it doesn't really seem to be a thing that would or should panic people. This article is written by Australian GP Ginny Mansberg, by the way. There's Ginny. And I've read her book, which is very informative and helpful, called The M Word. So I think what the issue is with doctors and their worries about prescribing HRT, it's really to do with their fear of being sued and their legal liability rather than the real risk. They are more worried about prescribing HRT because of what might happen to them than what might happen to you. That those 38 women, of whom 30 would might have developed breast cancer anyway, will turn around and say to them, this is your fault, you prescribed it for me, I'm taking you to court. I'm not going to discuss in this video the vaginal creams for treating atrophy because they are not really what I would call hormone replacement therapy. The level of estrogen in them is very low and it's only absorbed into the tissues around your vagina and immediate area. So I'm going to end this video here. I don't think I've forgotten anything that I really desperately wanted to say. I hope you found this content useful and informative. If you did, give me a like and remember to subscribe. Thank you very much for listening.